A vast expanse of white snow, freezing winds, lifeless landscapes, and weird, eerie signals seemingly coming from within Earth. These radio pulses occur in Antarctica, and no one can figure out what they are and where they're coming from. You see, scientists are running an experiment called ANITA, short for Antarctica Impulsive Transient Antenna. Basically, it's a bunch of detectors strapped to giant balloons and floating way up above the South Pole. Their job is to detect extremely high-energy neutrinos. How do they spot them? Right at the moment when neutrinos come into contact with ice and produce an intense, short burst of radio waves. Now, neutrinos are these tiny, almost massless particles that don't have an electric charge. They're everywhere and billions of them are flying through you every second, even while you're watching this video. Neutrinos come from all over the place, from the sun, exploding stars, deep space, even from under your feet. The sun pumps them out nonstop as it fuses hydrogen into helium. Stars that are going off blast out huge bursts of neutrinos during supernova explosions. When high-energy cosmic rays hit our atmosphere, they make new neutrinos that rain down on us too. And some even come from radioactive stuff decaying inside Earth. The oldest neutrinos have been flying through the universe since the Big Bang, but they're practically invisible because they almost never react with anything. That's why scientists use unbelievable experiments like ANITA to try and catch even a few of them. But let's get back to that fateful day when everything changed. Normally, the radio signals produced by neutrinos bounce off the ice and fly upward. That's where Anita can catch them. This is the whole point of the experiment, to study neutrinos and learn more about distant cosmic events like supernovas or whatever's happening light years away. But then something really weird happened. The detectors picked up radio waves that weren't bouncing off the ice at all. They looked like they were coming from below the horizon, from under the ice. Now, this shouldn't even be possible. According to everything we know about physics, signals can't just travel upward through solid rock and ice. One of the researchers, Stephanie Wiesel from Penn State, also said that those radio waves were coming in at super steep angles, like 30 degrees below the surface. The only way that could happen is if the signal had passed through thousands of miles of solid rock before hitting the detector. But if that were true, the rock would have completely absorbed it. So something just didn't add up. The team ran all the numbers and still got no clear answer. But for them, it was an interesting problem, since they didn't actually know what those anomalies were. What they did know was that they were probably not neutrinos. That's because if the team does detect a neutrino, that means it's traveled an insane distance without bumping into anything, possibly all the way from the edge of the observable universe. So, whatever Anita has picked up, it's not behaving like anything scientists have seen before. It might mean there's some totally new type of particle out there, or maybe something else is going on that we just don't understand yet. They published the findings in physical review letters, but the mystery remains unsolved. No one really knows what's going on under that Antarctic ice. Just that something out there isn't playing by the rules. Now, if scientists actually manage to detect and trace where those crazy fast particles come from, they can learn tons of stuff about the universe. Way more than even the biggest, most expensive telescopes allow us to see. You see, neutrinos basically zip through space almost at the speed of light, barely bumping into anything. It means they can carry untouched data about events that happened millions or even billions of light years away. That's why Whistle and a bunch of other researchers around the world have been building these insanely sensitive detectors to catch neutrino signals. Even the tiniest ones are super important, because in this field, one tiny blip of data can hold a treasure chest of information. So. Researchers have been designing setups in both Antarctica and South America to catch these rare particles. Anita is one of those detectors, and Antarctica's the perfect spot for it. There's hardly any radio noise, there are no cities, no traffic, and no random interference. The setup is actually pretty cool. 
They attach a cluster of radio antennas to a giant balloon, send it a few dozen miles up into the sky, and make it float over the endless stretches of white ice. From up there, it points downward, listening for faint radio signals coming from deep inside the ice. When one of those super rare neutrinos, specifically a tau neutrino, hits the ice, it creates another particle called a tau lepton. That lepton then shoots out of the ice and starts breaking down, losing energy and turning into smaller bits. That decay process gives off what's called an air shower, kind of like a spray of invisible sparks flying through the air. If we could actually see those air showers with our eyes, they'd look like someone waving a sparkler through the dark, bright streaks trailing behind as it moves. Studying the direction and pattern of these signals, the ones from the ice, ice showers, and the ones in the air, air showers. Scientists can figure out where the original particle came from. Usually it's super precise, kind of like bouncing a ball off the ground. You can predict where it'll go. But these weird new signals don't bounce the way they're supposed to. The angles are all wrong way steeper than anything the models can explain. So the team dug deeper. First, they looked at all the data from Anita's multiple balloon flights. Then they compared it against tons of computer simulations of cosmic rays and neutrinos and filtered out all the usual background noise. They even cross-checked their results with other experiments like the ice cube detector, which is also located in Antarctica, and the Pierre Auger Observatory in Argentina. They wanted to see if anyone else had picked up similar upward-going air showers. And guess what? Things got even weirder. They found nothing. No other detectors had picked up anything that could explain what Anita had seen. That's why the researchers ended up calling the whole situation anomalous. It basically means, yeah, we have no idea what this is, but it sure isn't behaving like a neutrino. Whistle explained that the signals just didn't fit into the usual picture of how particles were supposed to act. Some people have floated ideas, like maybe it's some new kind of physics, or a hint of dark matter. Dark matter is basically that invisible stuff that keeps the universe from falling apart. It's everywhere. We just can't see it. Scientists have been trying to figure out what it actually is for almost a century, and it's still one of the biggest mysteries out there. Everything we can see, like stars, planets, people, dogs, makes up only about 5% of the universe, and dark matter makes up around 27%. The rest is something even stranger called dark energy. Scientists think dark matter is what gives galaxies their shape and holds everything together like cosmic glue. Without it, the universe would look totally different. It would be totally amazing to find out that this theory is true. But since Ice Cube and Augur haven't caught the same thing, that really limits the possibilities. Penn State has been in the neutrino detecting game for almost a decade now building detectors and analyzing all kinds of cosmic signals. And the team is already working on their next big project, a brand new detector called Puel. It's going to be bigger, more sensitive, and way better at spotting those elusive neutrino signals. For now, this remains just one of those long-running cosmic mysteries that keep scientists awake at night. But the team is optimistic. When Pueo goes up, it'll have better sensors, which means if there really are more of these anomalies out there, this time they'll catch them. And maybe then we'll finally figure out what's behind them. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.